very good afternoon, everyone. I guess this talk would be a nice continuation from yesterday's talk by Dr. Carl Ram Narayan from Sapien Discovery, where he was talking about the hit to lead optimization strategies. So, uh, following are the outlines of this talk. First, I will be discussing about the statistics of the cancer, uh, followed by the compounds which we isolated from the Red Sea sponge, Hemimichael arabica. Also, I'm going to be discussing about the various biological activities from this isolated compound, phenylmethylidine hydantoin. Then also we are going to be looking at the three-dimensional quantitative structure activity relationship and pharmacophore modeling which we have done for these compounds. And lastly, I would conclude this talk. So based on the Center for the Disease Control and Prevention, cancer accounts for nearly one quarter of the deaths in the United States, exceeded only by the heart diseases. Now, according to the survey done by American Cancer Society, uh, prostate and breast cancer are the most frequently diagnosed malignancies. And in fact, they account for the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the United States. Now, looking further <coughs> into the statistics, uh, based on the 2014 survey, um, there are estimated, they have estimated that approximately 29,000 people are gonna die uh, in, the entire in the entire United States because of the prostate cancer. And looking in California state itself, that number is close to 3,000. And these numbers are slightly uh, more in, in the case of breast cancer. Now in the United States, uh, it is estimated that 40,000 women are gonna die because of the breast cancer. And in California, this number is approximately 4,000. Now, these number may not look big, for example, 3,000 and 4,000 deaths in California. But in fact, 10 men and 10 uh, women are dying every single day in the state of California only. Now, as we all know, uh, marine organisms are worldwide in existence. And because of the extreme concentration of the coexisting species, the habitat in which these organisms live become highly competitive and complex. And because of this intense competition, uh, they tend to synthesize, they tend to biosynthesize uh, potent chemical compounds in the form of secondary metabolites. And these secondary metabolites are usually highly bioactive. Now in this slide, uh, we have a picture of a marine sponge, Hemi Michael Arabica, which was collected from the Egyptian Red Sea coast, uh, a small town called as Hargada. And these were the three compounds which were isolated from this sponge. Specifically, compound one uh, showed a very potent activity uh, in various biological assays. So the isolated compound 4-hydroxyphenylmethylidine hydantoin was identified as the most active one, and therefore it was considered as the hit compound based on the results of various pharmacological assays. Here in this slide we have the results for the transepithelial electrical resistance and paracellular permeability studies. So on the left we have these results for the transepithelial electrical resistance and it is quite clear from here that in the presence of compound one, transepithelial electrical resistance was significantly increased, suggesting that these compounds uh, helped in maintaining the integrity of the tight junctions. To further prove this, we did the paracellular permeability studies, and in the presence of compound one, which is right over here, the treatment group, uh, it helped in stabilizing the junctional complexes. 
So this is just a confirmatory proof that these compounds actually um, um, helps to maintain the integrity of the tight junctions. Likewise, a spheroid disaggregation model uh, was selected as an in vitro antimetastatic assay, which is pretty much based on the disaggregation of cancer cell spheroids and also on the radial migration of these release cells on the extracellular matrix. This assay is very much closer to in situ tumor metastasis. Therefore, we have selected this assay to screen all these compounds. Depicting here is the imitation of the spheroid disaggregation model, which we have used. And over here in the center, we have these cluster of highly invasive uh, prostate cancer cells. Now, these cells tend to migrate radially uh, in the presence of serum-free media. And this distance actually demonstrates the invasive ability of these uh, cancer cells. And here in this slide, we have the actual picture of the spheroid. So on the left, we have a control, which means in the absence of compound, these cells uh, migrated radially. So this distance we calculated, and as you can see on the right uh, picture, this is in the presence of compound one. So the migration of these prostate cancer cells was significantly reduced. And in fact, the migration distance in the case of compound one was found out to be 79 micrometers. Now, obviously over here the objective was to develop more potent analogs of this 4-hydroxy phenylmethylidine hydantoin and also to establish the structure activity relationship among various phenylmethylidine hydantoin analogs. So to achieve these objectives, 40 various um, analogs of phenylmethylidine hydantoins were synthesized. And they were then tested in the spheroid disaggregation model. For all the compounds, 4-hydroxyphenylmethylidine hydantoin, which was the initial isolated compound from the Red Sea sponge, was considered as the base compound uh, with a migration distance value of 79 micrometers. Now, here in this slide, we have the optimization scheme. So first, we wanted to see the effect of this hydroxyl substituent on this phenyl ring. So we basically uh, get rid of this hydroxyl substituent, and the activity was significantly dropped. So that kind of gave us an indication that uh, hydroxyl group may be playing a crucial role for the activity. So secondly, we wanted to substitute all the ortho, meta, and para positions with the electron withdrawing groups. Also, uh, all these positions were substituted by the electron donating groups, such as alkyl substitute and alkoxy substituents. Likewise, heteroidal substitutions and the hydantoin ring modifications were also conducted. All right, so here are the compounds which, um, we, synthesi which we synthesized. And I'm obviously not going to go in detail of all these compounds, but I have a um, couple of compounds which showed a potent activity. So over here, if you recall, this is our original isolated compound, 4-hydroxy phenylmethylidine hydantoin, with a migration distance value of 79 micrometers. Now, these three compounds are the optimized compounds. So for example, when we substituted this para position with the N and diethyl substituent, then the migration distance value was reduced from 79 micrometers to 26 micrometers. Also, um, by substituting the para position with the ethyl mercapto substituent, the activity was further uh, increased, which means um, the migration distance was reduced from 79 micrometers to 15.5 micrometers. Now, to establish the three dimensional quantitative structure activity relationship, COMFA, which is comparative molecular field analysis, was 
utilized. So it COMFA is basically based on the data from the synthesized active molecules, which at that point we already had from our first generation phenylmethylidine hydrant twins. And it can be easily applied when the 3D structure of the receptor is not known. So obviously in our case, because we are dealing with the natural products, we did not have any specific um, molecular target. Now, uh, depicting here are the static and uh, electrostatic contour plots for our most active um, ethyl mercapto phenylmethylidine hydantoin. So on the left, we have the electro we, we have the um, static contour plot, and these green contours represent the areas where statically bulky groups are going to be favorable. Similarly, on the right, we have electrostatic contour plots, and these red contours are representing the areas where negative charge and hydrogen bond acceptor groups are going to be favorable. Now, um, coming on to the second generation anti-prostate cancer molecules, so over here the objective was to synthesize more active molecules than the most active first generation phenylmethylidine hydantoin, which was ethyl mercapto phenylmethylidine hydantoin with the IC50 value of 51.4 micromolar. So to achieve this specific objective, 32 more molecules were synthesized and were then tested in the wound healing assay. And here is a scheme for the, for the optimization of these molecules. So first, we wanted to incorporate those functional moieties at the specific meta or para positions which were shown active uh, from our first generation analogs. And also, we wanted to substitute uh, the para position by electronegative and bulky groups uh, based on the COMFA model, which we established earlier. Likewise, structural simplification and lipophilicity enhancement, along with the extension of the structure and linker extension strategies were also utilized. Now, over here in this slide, we have the activity results of the second generation um, um, hydantoins. So all these compounds were actually compared with our most active first generation PMH, which was ethyl mercapto phenylmethylidine hydantoin. And as you can see, as I said earlier, we uh, substituted the methoxy substituents at both the meta positions, as well as we wanted to keep the hydroxyl substituent at the para position, which was uh, the case uh, for the original isolated compound. And over here, again, we wanted to explore more binding regions at the active site of the receptor, which we don't have at this point. So this is just a simple extension of the structure strategies. But as you can see, the activity was significantly improved in comparison to our most active first generation PMH. And over here, this is a classic example of the linker extension strategies to exploit uh, further binding regions. Now, overall, we were able to uh, increase the activity. If you compare from first generation to second generation, we were able to increase the activity by 12 folds. And if compared from the original isolated um, compound, then we succeeded to increase the activity by 33 <coughs> folds. Now, the last objective was to develop a pharmacophore model. Uh, by using the active compounds from our second generation uh, phenylmethylidine hydantoins. Over here in this slide, we have a discotac pharmacophore model. On the left, we have pharmacophoric features. And on the right, we have distance relationship between these pharmacophoric points. So for example, these blue dots over here in the center represents the hydrophobic center. These green dots represents hydrogen bond acceptor sites, and then these pink dots represent the hydrogen bond donor sites. Now finally, I would like to conclude this talk by saying that um, marine sponge, hemimichael arabica, was targeted, and three compounds were isolated from this sponge. Among all those 
three compounds, 4-hydroxyphenylmethylidine hydantoin, was identified as the active compound. Now, in an attempt to improve the activity further, we synthesized approximately 40 compounds, and uh, these are the active compounds among all those, which is S-ethyl-PMH, N-N-diethyl-PMH, and metamethoxyphenylmethylidine hydantoin. Also, we established a successful uh, COMFA model and a pharmacophore model using 32 compounds which were synthesized using advanced optimization strategies. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge Omis Group for giving me this opportunity to present this. And thanks all for your patience listening. Questions are welcome now. Okay, yeah, let's give Mudith a big hand and uh, we have time for one or two qu quick questions. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you uh, for the uh, presentation. Um, I was wondering um, if uh, you try to hydrogenate the um, uh, pi bonds which connects the uh, aromatic ring and the hydantoin uh, uh, scaffold to see if you need the uh, conjugate, fully conjugated system or not. That's actually a pretty good suggestion. We haven't looked at that yet, but in the future we probably will. Yeah, because the thing is, the, the synthetic scheme which we utilized was a pretty straightforward single step uh, synthetic scheme by using a, a aldehyde, a, a, a appropriate aldehyde, whatever we are looking for, and then the hidden point. So, but it's a very good. Uh, of course, you introduce a rotatable bond then, which uh, you might give you more information on uh, the active side. Right. Well, you know, if we are talking about the conformers, then um, specifically phenytoin, for example, does have two phenyl rings. So it kind of gives a very flexibility to the phenytoin, for example. But the goal for these molecules was to identify those compounds which actually cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. So okay. Thanks. that's why we wanted to keep it rigid.